NHL insider Frank Cervelli speaks out on the Canucks and some of the things he says might confuse you. And a former head coach for the Vancouver Canucks makes the media headlines when he does something eerily similar to win in Vancouver. And is it a good thing they moved on from him? I'll get into this later on this episode. Before I start, I just want to say to thousands of you watching that aren't subscribed, if you're enjoying this daily videos on the Vancouver Canucks and you never want to miss another episode, make sure to go down and hit that subscribe button. It's completely free and it helps out the channel and keeps you up to date with everything around the Canucks. But with that, let's hop straight into the first topic today, which is Insider Speaks Out on the Canucks. Now, obviously, this is talking about Frank Cervelli, and he did an interview just kind of speaking on the Canucks and his thoughts on them. And it starts off. Are they contenders or pretenders? My answer would be somewhere in the middle, said uh, Frank. A lot of teams realize how talented Vancouver is and how strong their structure was at various points this year. I don't think anyone is necessarily quaking in their boots to face them if they end up being in the top seat of the Pacific. That's not a knock against them. It's just the West is so good and you're going to go through good teams. Now, obviously, he is talking about how the Canucks have been on stretches where they look like the best team in the NHL. They have stretches where they barely squeak out wins against the Arizona Coyotes. But I can't stress this enough. This is a team that does not have Elias Lindholm, who they acquired from the Calgary Flames. We haven't seen a full stretch of Elias Lindholm fully healthy and producing like he should be. And this is also a team that's without their starting goaltender, Thatcher Demko. And they're still piling wins. They're still getting wins. They're not losing four five six games in a row yes they are struggling at points yes the power play doesn't look outstanding at times but the big thing with this is this team is dealing with injuries they were out Dakota Joshua for a bit like I said Elias Lindholm's out they're without a guy like Carson Soucy for a while they're without their starting goaltender things will start to come together and I think he discredits them more than he should as this does look like one of the scarier teams in the NHL yes they don't have the experience but this is a deep team that has players that are playing above of what they should be and with a deep run this team would be scary to play in a seven game series for sure he continues on to say are the Canucks more or less feared than Vegas even though they're going to finish ahead of them in the standings the answer is Vegas is more feared my level of concern for Vancouver right now is a seven it's not nothing but considering that games always get harder at this point in the year and the difficulty ratchets up in a big way I'm a little surprised that this team which has had those elements all season long is suddenly missing the consistent marks there are other parts in the teams that are just playing better and they're not rising to that level part of them part of matching what's being thrown at them once again, yes, teams like Vegas are dealing with injuries as well. Thomas Hurdle, which I still don't understand how they acquired, is on IR for them. Mark Stone is out with an injury, but they are below the Canucks in the standings. The big thing with the Canucks team, like I said, they're dealing with injuries. I know there's a bit of concern. Frank said that his concern level is at a 7, and I would disagree with this. In my opinion, yes, the inexperience is what would concern me. Yes, getting Thatcher Demko and Elias Lindholm at 100% is a worry as well. Thatcher seems like he'll come back completely fine. Elias Lindholm is almost like winning the lottery. We don't really know what the winning numbers are, but we're hoping they're going to be right come playoff time. So the big thing with this is I don't think this is a seven concern level minus the inexperience, but you have guys like Rick Tockett, who's going to coach this team that has coached teams to the Stanley Cup finals. He was an assistant coach two years in Pittsburgh when they won Stanley Cups. He's coached the Coyotes. He's coached the Canucks to one of their best seasons they've ever had. And in my opinion, there's nothing to worry about yes like i said when you look at the western conference standings there is a complete dogfight to get this top spot the dallas stars are just above the canucks with 76 games played and 105 points the canucks are at second 102 points you have the avs just below them 102 the jets the oilers vegas nashville who's been rolling yes these teams might be hard to beat yes they're going to be hard to play against but some of these teams don't have what the canucks have and that's depth and guys willing to put everything on the line. Yes, Vegas might have a couple more star players that might look better than some of the Canucks players. Yes, Eichel might be playing outplaying Elias Pettersson at this point. Yes, Connor McDavid and Dry Settles in this, but they don't have the team the Canucks built. They look great all around. You have guys from uh, Teddy Bluger who looks great on the third line. Dakota Joshua, who has stepped up and looked like an absolute gem in this top six. Hoaglander, who's scored 22 goals this year. Thatcher Demko, Susie, this team is looking like they'll make a deep run. Now, when you do look at this, he says, I tend to lean towards it not mattering as much. Look at the Florida Panthers last year. They're quite literally lost their way into the postseason. They were down and out. If it was for the Pittsburgh Penguins, 
Gage in the home against the Chicago Blackhawks. The Panthers would have not been in the playoffs. I don't know that you necessarily had to be at your absolute best, but what you need to recognize is that Rick Tockett is saying is, if you think this is hard, it's going to get five times harder when it comes to playoff times, when you get ready. And I completely agree with this. Yes, it's going to get harder. But the big thing with this is this team has built for it. We've seen Rick Tockett speak all year on how he wants this team to expect the hardest and not to go into this easily. So what's your thoughts on all this? What's your thoughts on everything Frank said? Are you worried? Is that a seven? Is that a one? Let me know down in the comments. Well, that will hop straight into the second topic, which is, did the Canucks make the right change? So this was going into uh, just kind of the uh, Travis Green situation that did happen in the game versus uh, the Rangers. I'm so sorry. In many ways, back and forth between Green and Lavalette looked a lot like the confrontation between Tortorella and the former head coach Bob Hartley during the infamous Canucks vs. Flames uh, brawl back in 2013-14. No word yet on whether Green tried to go down the hallway to the Rangers dressing room during the first period on Wednesday's game. Green, 56, previously served as the head coach of the Canucks from 2017 to 2021. Although the uh, BC product helped the Canucks reach the 2020 uh, COVID bubble, the team was on track for yet another non-playoff season when Bruce Boudreaux replaced him behind the bench on December 5th. I did want to just put this in there. Travis Green was 133 and 183 record with the Canucks. And Rick Tockett in his first season is 47 and 21. I did want to just put this in there because we did see a lot of coaching changes that went from Travis Green to a guy like Bruce Boudreaux, which I wish was still on this Canucks team in a way as an assistant coach, an advisor, whatever it might be. He was loved by the fans and everyone did love him. But it seems like the They've went, went the right way by bringing in a guy like Tockett and how his system has benefited this team so much. Well, that, let's hop into everyone's favorite topic today, which is comment of the day. And the comment of the day comes from uh, two, sorry. Jad says, really solid video, Mark. Appreciate your work in both analysis and presentation. I've been a Canucks fan since season one. A, I'm that old. And I look forward to your videos. This was just an awesome comment. I wanted to add it in for this reason. Then you see Wayne left a comment as well. He's been a huge supporter of this channel. He's one of our top commenters. And he's been a fan since day one. And he says, nice post, Mark. Most unsung hero for me is Hoaglander. I would try for Heronic in Dakota. I don't think Lindholm is a keeper, let alone wants to stay here. As for the team in the playoffs, they have their best get their power play going if they want any chance of run they need two things for a good run that extra gear and b which would be a power play that scores for darn six again great post mark and i just wanted to kind of just reach on this because it's just awesome to see you guys just commenting on this and loving the videos if you enjoy this video and you want to be featured on the next episode of canucks digest as comment of the day make sure to go down and leave a comment down in uh, the comment section you might be featured while you're down there make sure to leave a like subscribe leave a comment like i said share this with your friends let me know everything as well are you happy that we moved to rick talkett as our head coach do you miss boost bergeron would you rather him be in the system at some point what's your thoughts on everything frank sherry valley said and like i said if you want to be featured just leave a comment down there and you could be the next comment of the day but with that take care